Greetings, unsettled souls. Yes. Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi doing uh, political commentary for the Media Speaks. And um, you might know me from Blasting News. You might know me from Wits News. Um, for those of you that have been sharing the King Diamond show, Yours truly is now read uh, quite right, widely this month in the EU, uh, including King Diamond's home of Denmark. So I thank you kindly. As people trickle in, I want to say two things. First of all, I didn't do a Thanksgiving show. Um, I did post a, uh, a message on my Facebook account, which is why I tell you to log on to Facebook, log on to uh, YouTube, spread the videos around. And uh, that's what I want to talk about for a second, because for me, holidays have changed. There were a number of things that brought great joy to yours truly. And with some of those being absent, I don't necessarily do the holiday thing as much. However, one of the things as it relates to the show is that we need to do something about the algorithms. And I'm going to get into all the silliness and all the uh, the zaniness in a minute. But if this show is going to keep on, right now it's I'm doing two a month. I used to do two or three per week. Now, again, some of that is because the other half of the show is no longer with it. But the other reason is that it is very hard for the show to be seen. So I, I can still do this and keep facts coming to you. I can still bring you the silly dunce cap of the month. But it's not going to do any good if you're not already one of the people on board because other people are, quite frankly, never going to see this. So the two things I really need from everyone, first and foremost, is shares. I cannot overemphasize how important that is. The other thing is I definitely need uh, support from uh, financially so that I can afford to mail the dunce cabs out, research time, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Because, again, with Facebook hiding the truth in order to cater to the mainstream media, what inevitably ends up happening is things like donations go way down for people like me. And that creates, of course, a bit of a struggle when you're trying to take time up that you could be doing something more profitable to, to get information and truth and things like that gathered. So, therefore, it is very, very important that you share the show and that you donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. I don't care if it's a dollar. I, mean, I certainly understand what it's like to be so broke that that may be all you have. All right, friends, I've given everyone time to trickle in. <coughs> now it's time to get a coughing spell before I get to do my show. That's all professional. Um, we're going to play who, which, way, which race Bader won. So when it gets to that section of the show, you're going to want to go ahead and leave a comment. There's a whole series of race Baders right in a row, but I want to see if you guys can guess which one wins the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. So... Leave your comment down there as we go. Although uh, we start in a different direction because there are dumbies to be found in all walks of life. And it does not just pertain to the social media and race baiting aspects of our world. Um, listen to this. This is from a PJ Dub, Paul Joseph Watson, Prison Planet. China unveils doomsday bomb while the US, U.S. military concentrates on diversity. Um, this, I thought, was particularly amusing in much the same way that Dr. Strangelove is. That is to say, terrifying. While China unveiled, it says, a new doomsday nuclear bomb that can strike the U.S. within 30 minutes with 10 warheads, a top U.S. general declared gender and race diversity to be a war-fighting necessity against the homogenous forces of China and Russia. P.J. Jubb writes, we're truly screwed. Billed as the ultimate doomsday weapon, the fearsome super nuke was displayed on China's 70th anniversary parade in Tiananmen Square, of course, where they butchered people. The Dongfeng uh, 41 
is a 4,672-mile-per-hour 4, intercontinental ballistic missile that is said to have the furthest range of any nuclear missile and could reach the U.S. in 30 minutes. That's according to The Sun. Meanwhile, in the U.S., U.S. Major General Lori Reynolds <coughs> told 300 intelligence Marines that the 9th Annual Marine Corps Association and Foundation's Intelligence Awards Dinner that diversity will make the difference in future in-fight war fighting. Yeah, diversity will stop the nuclear bomb. I believe dramatic mix of talent of all races, religions, backgrounds, and genders will be the difference in the future. She added that promoting diversity was crucial because it was an advantage that China and Russians do not hold. We must talk about diversity as a warfighting necessity, and tonight I'm declaring that it is essential to the information environment, Reynolds said. Now, when you have a political correct mindset taking over the entire strategizing of the U.S. as it relates to advanced weaponry and battlefield implementation, well, there's problems. Again, I could care less if a guy is gay and wants to be in the military. I really don't. I know at least one homosexual gentleman who could kick my ass. I think he's like a green belt. He's doing amazing. My point is, when that becomes the focus, and that would apply to straight people too. I'm not into dividing people here by who they sleep with or what color they are or any of that stupidity. But when this becomes something that is that important that it is a defining characteristic of the military, then I think it's safe to say we have a rather significant problem on our hands. Moving on, New York Post, here's a great dumbie. This would have won. This would have won, but I don't have the money to send this overseas. Listen to this. This is pure stupidity here on the Dunce Camp of the Month show. Are you ready? I hope so. Hamas co-founder dies after accidentally shooting himself Head. One of the founders of Hamas, that is a terrorist organization, for those of you who wonder why I'm laughing about it, these are people that kill innocents every day and then praise Allah for it. One of the founders of Hamas died Tuesday, weeks after accidentally shooting himself in the head, according to reports. Imad Alami, 62, was examining his personal weapon in his home when it inadvertently went off in his face on January 9th, the militant Palestinian group said. <coughs> well, I mean, either that or it could be that this Hamas leader had dirt on Hillary Clinton. You never know. Maybe he was on Epstein's plane. All right, guys, moving on. Um, going out with a bang. SHTFplan.com, Church of England, the UK must ban pointing eyes. Now, I was talking about the other half of the show when we started, the show the way that it's supposed to be. And at the time, Christelle and I had done a rather hilarious show about banning eyes. If you have not seen it, you're going to go back a couple years, youtube.com slash the correct news. It's hilarious. It is really, really, really funny. One of the reasons it was funny was that it was impossible to imagine that anybody would really want to ban knives. That was only a few years ago. That brings us to this. I told you it was the Dunce Cap of the Month show. The Church of England is demanding that the United Kingdom use force and violence to ban pointy knives. A religious organization is now insisting that crime be reduced by further enslaving the population. Now, first of all, they're going to have just as much luck at, what, are they going to do, ban knife sharpeners now? Because, God forbid, you sharpen your own if they're not sold with points. Second of all, let us remember how useful is a non-pointy knife. That's like saying a non-circular spoon. Doesn't make any damn sense. A gun that doesn't shoot any bullets. 
a pizza that doesn't have any dough. It makes no sense. Last year, London's murder rate briefly overtook that of New York City, a feat likely to be repeated as crime continues its decline in the U.S., and that is according to FBI.gov, by the way. While the latest U.K. figures show an increase in violent crimes committed by, with guns and knives, it says, in spite of all the laws restricting ownership of anything that could constitute a weapon, Violent crimes are getting worse. That's because banning things do not work. I remember when uh, Brian Warner, who I went to junior high school with, when he was transforming into Marilyn Manson, he would have just been an underground sensation if it hadn't been for the media. That's just one story of many. I mean, why don't we ban drugs? Why don't we ban murder? That'll help, right? When the human condition resists perfection through legislation the answer always seems to be and more and stupider laws jd tersel of reason historically we needed a point at the end of our knife to pick up food because forks weren't invented now we only need the point to open packets when we can't be bothered to find the scissors therefore they should ban pointy knives Again, if I could afford to send dunce caps to England, that would have been a winner too. Which one do you guys think is dumber? Which one is dumber? Let me know here in the uh, comment thing. Which one's dumber? The Hamas leader blowing himself up with his own gun, which is more irony than stupidity. Or the banning pointy knives. See, I'm leaning towards pointy knives now. All right. <coughs> that just means there's something stupider than a pointy knife ban coming up because they get worse as we go. This is also PJ Dub Prison Planet. University of Washington professor says SpongeBob spare, spare, Square Pants is racist and violent. Uh oh. Now, again, which race baiter won the Dunce Cap of the Month award? I want to see if you guys can guess which one it is. Is this it? No. But keep an eye. The net, you, could be the next one, could be the one after. Which race baiter wins? Well, here's one stupid idiot. A professor at the University of Washington University wrote an academic article denouncing SpongeBob SquarePants as violent, racist, and insidious. I remember they used to say that Wiley e. Coyote and the Three Stooges were violent. And now again, that goes back to bad parenting, not bad entertainment. Yes, really, he writes. Professor Holly Barker's tirade against the yellow cartoon character was published by an, by an academic journal called the Contemporary Pacific, a journal of, Inla of island affairs. In it, Barker, who very well could have won the Dunce Cap of the Month award, argues that the show's fictional character of Bikini Bottom is unfair because it is based on the non-fictional Bikini Atoll, a coral reef in the Marshall Islands used by the U.S. military for nuclear testing during the Cold War. So because some people did some bad things a long time ago, we must never draw any parallels again in all of history. Let's just erase all the bad things from the board, never talk about it, never joke about it, never reflect on it, and all smile. The indigenous people of the area were relocated during the testing, which eventually rendered the area uninhabitable due to residual, resid, residual radiation, blah, blah, writes Celine Ryan. Barker finds it unjust that SpongeBob and his pals be allowed to occupy the area when the non-fictional indigenous people of the area do not have the option to return to their homeland. If you are drawing, and no one, if you follow my work, the only other show that I still do every month is the, the uh, Massive Fukushima update. I'm anti-nuke in every way. But if that gets in the way of you possibly winning, uh, you possibly paralleling that to a cartoon, you deserve to be on the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. And you are. He argues that Spongebob has privilege because he is an American character who can go about his life carefree without having to worry about the detonation of nuclear bombs. I do believe that a lot of Americans died from the nuclear fallout caused at Bikini and all. Furthermore, if this guy, this genius, is trying to say that 
SpongeBob lives at Bikini and all, then his privilege is not going to save him from radiation poisoning. He's going to die just as quick as anybody else. So either if he's not worrying about nuclear bombs going off, then the bikini where SpongeBob lives isn't bikini and all. If it is bikini and all, then he does have to worry about it. So no matter which way you go about this, Barker, you are wrong. And that's why you're on the Dunce Cap of the Month show. This equates to symbolic violence, mind you now. It's a different kind of violence, symbolic violence. Because SpongeBob and his friends are perpetuating injustices against indigenous people. This is more divide and conquer. They want us to be at each other's throats. They want us to be fighting. They don't want us to be united. The blacks and the whites, the Mexicans and the blacks, the Koreans and the... They don't want that. Because if people ever wise up and realize that there is no race problem on any large scale beyond what's perpetuated by the media to keep us fighting, then we might not be fighting. And at that, at that point, we might actually be able to understand that we are all being hosed equally, and this is not about race. All right, friends, and then you move on. You think, all right, well, does this one win? Michigan State U bans mustaches, sombreros, aliens in orange suits, Mexicans, Japanese, hypersexualized racism for Halloween. Now, again, I'm mentioning this in November because you have to wait for the October dumpties to come in and you can't do that until october is over because halloween is the end so it comes on november show so stay with me on this american mirror students at michigan state university are getting an education in how they can avoid offending people with culturally inappropriate halloween costumes in what's becoming a new tradition that undermines the university's own identity <coughs> I want to put this up front. Why I dressed up multiple times for Halloween during the week in the nightclub that I DJ at, and I dressed up. My my my. Uh, it's believed that the Mexican side of my family has South American, <clears throat> Indian blood in us. We don't know for sure. I don't want to be Pocahontas. I never had a DNA test, but it's suspected. We don't know due to divorce. I've talked about this many times, but I dressed up as a Native American Indian. I put war paint on, I put a blanket on with the, you know, the, put your head through, what they used to do before coats, put a headband on, and under it, if somebody said, oh, you're an Indian, I would lift my shirt, and I had a Cleveland Indian shirt on, and it was, you know, and I said, I'm a Cleveland Indian. Why? Because it's funny, that's why. Humor. And I don't care about being politically correct, but clearly some people do, and that's how they ended up on my show. The unsolicited advice. I love that. On what to wear on Fright Night appeared on message boards in campus residences this week to help students answer the question, is your Halloween costume racist? I don't, I, the thing is, but the more prudent question is, do I care if my Halloween costume is racist? No, I don't. Feel free to dress up as me. And do a show and mimic me. It's not hard. I have a list. Go for it. The Morning Watch, uh, as it reported that, it's the school's conservative news site. At least they have some reason. Cultural appropriation versus appreciation. In other words, don't laugh. Don't have any good fun. Don't, don't smile. It doesn't matter if the get-up is humorous or sexy because it's offensive to use. Those peoples are human elements. For the sake of bringing laughter. Yes, it is for the sake of bringing laughter. That's the funny thing about holidays and celebrations. They are about, in fact, bringing laughter. So did this win the Dunce Cap of the Month? No, it didn't. But uh, definitely no sombreros, no mustaches, no Nazi gear. Now, I saw a Halloween costume online, and I don't think anybody had the balls to buy it. I didn't have the money to buy it. It was Hitler on Ice the, from the Mel Brooks movie. That's hilarious. You're mocking Hitler. It's great. Mocking. He's terrible. Nope. None of that. No Rastafarians, illegal aliens, Middle Eastern attire, or other racially, culturally, or ethically based costumes. No rah-rahs. You know what? I, I'm going to have a Halloween costume. You know, if I still had my druthers, if I, if I was 
half of the joyful person that I once was, I would have a costume where I would encourage everybody to break every single rule that they had on there and then go ahead and see if, you know, who won at the end of the night. Good morning, Susie Q. Hello. Let's ban fire while we're at it. Uh, WTF. They are all a bunch of phony idiots, writes Johnny Galati. Best channel on. Is it true 200 bags of nuclear waste blown away by the typhoon? I, I did hear it was a large number of uh, waste blown away by the typhoon. He's talking about Fukushima, the other show I do. There's more dumpties coming. Feel free to join in the chat here. I answer those who talk to me. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Susie Q. Yeah, I do believe the number was 200. I'm not sure, but I know a lot of them were. Yeah, And again, the half-life on the radioactivity would be uh, still make it deadly for a great a great percentage of that too so yeah that's that's a particular problem there john all right does this one win the dunce cap of the month award university bans white students from attending anti-racism meeting now did it did it win that this has to be the dumbest race baiter and it most certainly is not no it's close now before we get into this, let me point out why it's dumb. First of all, if you're going to address the problem of racism, wouldn't it be a wise and rather prudent idea to make sure that you included the people in it who are suspected of said racism? Otherwise, you're probably not going to bring about any change. All you're going to do is whine to others seeking victimhood. And again, why, why would this be a motive all over? Why would this be cropping up? It would be happening because they want, and who's they? The universities. Who's they? The governments. The United Nations. They do not want the people banding together, the proverbial 1%, if you will. They don't want people realizing that we're all being hosed equally. So let's, let's, look, at, let's look at this brilliant idea here. Dumb cap of the month, man. The University of Sheffield Students Union in the UK has banned white people from attending a meeting about anti-racism. Yes, really. The SU announced that it would hold focus groups on how we can create anti-racist students union as part of an effort to shift from non-racist to an actively anti-racist stance. The point is that there isn't large-scale racism at the school. This is Paul Joseph Watson, Prison Planet again. There isn't any wide-scale racism there. Therefore, what they're doing is just deliberately pushing white people out to create the divide that I told you about for the reasons that I explained. Please note that these sessions are only open to black and minority ethnic students, BME students. Banning people from a meeting about racism because of their skin color is, oh, what's the word he wrote? <gasps> Racist. The controversy follows a similar farce at the University of Edinburgh where white people were banned from asking questions at an event called Resisting Whiteness. Oh, but what if you had Resisting Blackness? No, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be racist at all, would it? You see what they're trying to do to us? All right, so let's, let's move on here. Uh, the winner, actually. Is it the winner? Um... Again, PJ Dub, British chief of police warns that misgendering people is a form of abuse. No, it didn't win because I can't afford to send things to the UK. It has to be in the US, but it was worth mentioning. In other words, freedom of speech is now abuse. Just for stating biological facts, because somebody decides they want to be a woman, you have to want to call them a woman mindless. The chief of police in Britain chose to recognize International Pronouns Day by putting out a warning video <clears throat> that misgendering transgender people is a form of abuse. They're not transitioning into any other gender. They're still the exact same gender they were. They're just in a dress or a suit. Today is International Pronouns Day, said Detective Chief Constable Julie Cook. And again, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me what you want to be. I'm quite libertarian. Do you, as they say. Just don't expect me to have to change common sense in language to suit 
you. And I don't expect you to do so to me either. You're not really a host. You're an idiot. Okay? It's called freedom of speech. In a video posted to Twitter, on which is a day particularly important to people who identify as transgender or gender nonconforming. Why can't they identify as something that isn't about their sex? Oh, because sex is all the culture cares about. And that's what they want to keep us focused on. So they can keep us divided. So that we never... Y'all sound familiar? Yeah. See, that's why. There's a point to me showing you the dumbies in our society. Being misgendered can have a huge impact on somebody and their personal well-being. And it can be used as a form of abuse for somebody, and that just isn't right. No, what isn't right is forcing everyone to cater and bow towards somebody else's preference when their preference is not based on biological fact. Plain and simple. Today is about raising awareness. See, I rose. I can't even finish reading this. Do check it out, friends. Is this the winner? Elizabeth Warren admits... Uh, no, no, excuse me. Take two. Elizabeth Warren wants to give $1 trillion in climate reparations to black families. Talk about pandering to blacks. I guarantee every black friend I have listening right now, welcome aboard, is thinking about the word pandering right now and laughing at our faux Indian. Pocahontas Climate Justice plans to call, plan calls for handing over $1 trillion in environmental reparations to black families. Now this is even funnier since we've proven on this show time and time again that man-made global warming is a lie and that there is no climate change. So basically, she just wants to give them a trillion dollars in order to buy their votes and then stand behind the climate lie, of which many people make a lot of money on. And it is, in fact, a climate lie. Pollution is racist. And because, in case you didn't know, pollution is racist, he wrote. The plan called Fighting for Justice as We Combat the Climate Crisis asserts that black families are more likely to live in neighborhoods with higher concentration of air pollution than white families even when they have the same or more income? No. No, that is remarkably untrue. I mean, check it out in the city where you live. I live in Canton, Ohio, down by the Timken Company, down by Ashland Oil. And again, I, do, I don't believe any of this is warming the planet, but I do believe all this stuff we're puffing into the air is certainly giving us lung cancer and diseases like that. I certainly do. I don't believe it's warming the planet. I don't think we need tax for it. The more taxes you pay, the less you can pay on good health care to combat the air pollution, for that matter. But they it's pretty equal because we're all being hosed equally. Black people are not making less than white people. You don't see ads in the paper that say $10 an hour for a black man, $14 an hour for a white man. These people, all of us, white people, black people, Asian, all people, make the same rates at these plants, and many of them live close to the plant for that reason. And it has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with color. It has nothing to do with gender or identity. The plan doesn't address why, if they have the same income, the black families don't just move. But it does claim that studies show whites largely cause air pollution. Surely this is due to demographics alone, and that blacks and Latinx are more likely to breathe it in. He does bring up a good point. Why wouldn't they just move? According to Warren, environmental racism is the result of decades of discrimination. Now, again, I don't, I've never been to a city where I see more black people living in the area unless more black people happen to have the job, which you see sometimes in areas like Detroit. And again, it's because they're living close to where they work not because of any other reason. Common sense idea. So is this the Dumps Cap of the Month Award? Listen to this. Oh. <laughs> CNN. <coughs> CNN piece claims that the Joker movie is racist. Cue the Dumps Cap music and no. No. How many of you thought for sure? All right. Here we go. 
CNN has published an opinion piece insisting that the movie The Joker is racist. It's a validation of white male resentment, an endorsement of Trump's rise to power. Yes, really. While many viewers have, a, have focused on Fleck as an incel hero, his status as a sexless loner turns to violence. The true nature of the movie's appeal is actually broader. It's an insidious validation of the white male resentment that helped bring Donald Trump to power. No. I could imagine in some circles, though, there is the reason that Donald Trump has come to power being trumpeted as we are sick of hearing race baiting lies about a racism scenario that is not extant in this country and we're tired of hearing about it from people like CNN and we elected Donald Trump because we know that there is no inherent racism in the United States. We know that you want us at each other's throats so that we, the black man, the white man, and every other man and woman of our identities don't get together to stand together and realize that we're all being hosed equally. I've mentioned that enough in this show that I hope it's understood. Joker at its core is the story of the forgotten man, the metaphoric displaced and disfranchised white man. Well, that's if you cheat the white man, yeah, whose goodwill has been abused and whose status has been reduced. A man has been crushed underfoot by the elite, dragged down by the equality-demanding feminists, and climbed over by the upstart non-white and immigrant masses. Well, if you invite someone into the country and you give them money to open a store, while the people who are already living here do not get such benefits, I do see why they would be upset, but I do not see how that plays the least bit into the Joker. And again, they mention this in here. One of the Joker's love interests, it says, it also doesn't, I'm just going to read it. It's so dumb, you got to hear it. Yang's primary reason for asserting that the movie is subtly racist is because the main character lives with his mother in a rundown apartment block populated by non-white tenants. So he lives among black people. That makes him racist. I thought we were told we were racist if we didn't live among black people. White flight? So no matter what you do, you're racist, right? His other reason is that in the opening scene, Joker is beat up by a black and Latinx youth. The fact that the same character also receives the beat down from a group of white men and later punch in the face from another white man seems to have slipped Yang's mind. If the movie is a validation of the white male resentment and has some kind of racist undertone, as Yang is suggesting, he writes, it's somewhat odd that all the characters of Joker's murders in the film are white. It also doesn't explain why he is keen on entering into a mixed relationship with a black single mom. The notion that the film is pro-Trump is also ludicrous, given that one of the Joker's main enemies in the plot, Thomas Wayne, is a Trump-like figure. Therefore, you are an idiot, friends. Make sure you do read that piece. But again, let's remember that throughout the movie, the Joker character himself repeatedly asserts that he is a non-political entity. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get through this so that we are not here all day. Video gender studies professor blamed Trump for black female obesity. Oh, yeah, that had to win, right? Did it? You're damn straight, it did. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award winner has been found. Alright guys, I promised you dumby. Listen to the Dunce Cap of the Month Award winner. Listen to this race-baiting piece of human Phil, thank you, PJ Dub, for finding it. Found us most of the articles today. During a television appearance, a New Jersey gender studies professor who won the Dunce Cap of the Month award claimed that Donald Trump's policies were to blame for black female obesity. I hate when people talk about black women being obese. I hate it because it becomes a way to blame us for a set of conditions that we didn't create. In other words, 
and I didn't know this, there must be, according to her, an epidemic, probably of white people, I would suspect, roaming the cities and forcing food down the face and mouth of minorities, just stuffing food in with, like, the stick end of a plunger, I guess. Um, this is according to Brittany Cooper during a discussion on black women on Black Women Own the Conversation, which is broadcast on the Oprah Winfrey Network. We're living in the Trump era, the professor said. And look, these policies kill our people. You can't get access to good health care, good insurance, but you can clearly get access to a full dinner plate. I don't know. He's not letting you starve to death. I mean, you got to give the Trumpster that. Presumably, she believes there are no black obese women before Trump was elected. <coughs> but it gets dumber. Believe it or not. Cooper then went on to assert that it's harder for black women to lose weight than white women because they are more stressed out about racism and it slows down their metabolism. Yes, really. If you believe that, then you must not understand at all, at all, the way stress and metabolism works in some people. Some people, it does the opposite, by the way. They lose weight. But in it doesn't matter if your stress is from some racism, even if it's imaginary like yours is, or real. It doesn't matter if it's stress due to a divorce. It doesn't matter if it's stress due to just wanting to shoot yourself in the head because you hate your life. It affects your weight the same. Even if it's not racist? Even if it's not racist, yeah. It's literally that the racism that you are experiencing and the struggle to make ends meet actually means the diet won't work for you the same, she claimed. Well, you could just not stuff food into your mouth. And if you quit stuffing the food in, the weight's going to calm down. Maybe you need to be on a more extreme diet than the one that you're on. Now a generation of clinically obese black women can blame racism for their inability to lose weight and continue stuffing their faces with cake. How inspiring. Again, I know a whole lot of white heifers, too. I, I was saying this the other day. For those of you who wonder, I, uh, my, uh, my dad is uh, Mexican, quite likely some indigenous uh, people in his indigenous races in that family line. We don't know for sure. Italian Sicilian. My mom was English, Welsh, English, Welsh, French, and German. All right, I got, before I show you the hat and read you the award, I got to, uh, Johnny writes again, very sad. You are the best. Thank you again. I know where to go to listen to Common Sense. God bless you. Thank you. Rights versus privileges, writes Ion Dunnett. Clarity versus confusion, divide and conquer. But you go, Sam. You go. United we stand. Exactly. Do not let them separate us. They're trying to make us hate each other on color or sex or who we're sleeping with or who we're not sleeping with or what gender. No. Hey, Sam, good morning. Thank you, uh, Kalafsberry Productions. Please, I hope you're sharing this. Johnny, uh, L-A-M-I-O, he's not letting you starve to death. Price, absolutely true. <laughs> absolutely true. All right, friends, so here's the dunce cap they're getting sent. Um, dunce. Uh, I drew a, a rather big woman here. It says, I'm a heifer who won't quit hogging down food. Pity me. <laughs> um, and again, I, I've had weight problems my whole life. I'm a little chubby now, but I didn't even have, like, for Thanksgiving, I had leftovers. And then I broke down and ordered Asian food yesterday. Um, Trump made me eat these dots. That's priceless. Um, Pac-Man, millennials. Um... Don't stuff your fat face and you won't be so fat. Trump or not, eat less. So there's my little dude there. I'm trying to show it to two cameras at once in case you wonder. And uh, lastly, common sense. There's always one of those in every one. And what does the Dunce Count for the Month Award say? Again, I didn't get it printed. I'm going to get it printed, but I will be putting it on the Facebook comment line for this video. So when you go to Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, the Facebook.com slash the correct views, then you will see the uh, the award until I get it printed. I don't have a printer, although I would like one. So you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal and uh, leave a little leave a message subject printer, and I will buy one. 
the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Way to go, Brittany Cooper, I wrote. For your efforts in blaming black rate, issue, rate issues on Donald Trump and for failing to understand that obesity among all races has to do with, in most cases, simply not stuffing mounds of food into one's face. You win the dunce cap of the month. For failing to understand that in 2011, I wrote, right at the three-year mark of his administration that Mr. Trump is now in, as you attack him, this would be Obama, a study was reported on KHN News and NPR, which showed higher obesity rates during his leadership than during Mr. Trump's. You have won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. In other words, I looked up very easy to find information that in 2011, the rates of obese black women were higher during Obama than Trump. Perhaps in the future, I wrote, it would be wise to understand that one's political stance has no tangible or related effect on one's weight, but rather the number of push-ups that they do. No, not regular push-ups, but simply pushing up their fat ass from the table and not blaming others for a lack of control. And that, friends, is the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show, friends. Thank you for listening. Please donate, if you can, at the correct views at hotmail.com. Uh, donate through PayPal, and uh, please share the video. That helps immensely when that is done. Good night, friends. God bless, and thank you so much for listening.